It's been more than six months since I last competed on the international scene. It is very unclear when we will be allowed to compete again. I'm quite hungry to really go out there on the competition stage and try hard. So I thought this could be an interesting opportunity to pick some of the most memorable moments from the last competition season. The competition actually starts many weeks before the competition itself in training, which is kind of the first stage of it. There are no rivals, there's just you, but that's what decides how fit you are going to arrive to the competition. The training is actually where you need to put a lot of effort, a lot of hard work, where it can be painful, where it can be sweaty. This is the hard work. The competition itself is more the icing on the cake. There's nothing you can change about your fitness, yet you can still mess up a lot. Once you arrive to the competition, you go directly into the isolation zone. Most people would be surprised how friendly and relaxed atmosphere there is in the isolation zone. It's completely up to you if you see the others as rivals or friends. A warm-up wall and refreshments must be, according to the rules, included. Regarding to the food, you're usually given a banana or apple. On some of the World Cup stages, the food is actually pretty good. And I guess for some of the competitors, it is hard, like not taking the advantage of the food and maybe eating too much. But I always bring my own food and I set a plan what I want to eat before the competition. Most competitors start warming up two hours before they start climbing. I usually opt for slightly shorter warm-up. Actually, it's quite easy that the warming up session turns into proper training bouldering session. Because we don't really have that many opportunities to climb together. But it's very important to realize that the competition is not decided on a warm-up wall. So I definitely try to stop before I would even have the feeling of kind of getting close to being too tired. After I finish my warm-up, there's usually half an hour where we transit from the isolation zone into the call-out zone. This half an hour is definitely the most stressful part of the competition. I just try to be with my mind, my feelings, to really try to prepare my mindset to get into the perfect state when I, once I start climbing. Obviously, I do a lot of visualization in the isolation zone. If you want to know more, check out some of the previous episodes when I really dig deep into the visualization. When I'm about to enter the competition stage, I really like that the audience is noisy. Some of the World Cup stages in terms of spectators are legendary. For me, World Cup in Munich has the best vibes. The crowd is packed and everybody in the crowd knows about climbing and knows when it is the best moment to cheer. When I start climbing, I definitely can hear the crowd, but the higher I am, the less I hear it in case everything is going in the flow. And that even allows me to get into this like proper competition mode when the brain is kind of switched off and everything is kind of in a flow. Meiringen last year was the first bouldering World Cup of the season. Qualification and semi-finals went really well. Tomoa Narasaki and I, we were the only ones to top first three bold rounds in the finals. The last boulder problem was very special. It was a crack. The intention of the root setters on this boulder problem was to test our abilities to hand jam. The rest of the boulder problem was 
pretty simple. Hand jamming is a technique which normally doesn't appear on the competition at all, so it was shocking for the audience. It was not only about whether you will do it with a hand jam or not, but it was also interesting to see if some of the competitors will be able to do it without hand jam at all. On this ball problem, I was going out last, so I was waiting if somebody would top out the ball problem. The first four competitors didn't top it, as I could hear from the isolation zone. The last one, before it was my turn, was Tomoa Narasaki. I was expecting that neither Tomoa would be able to climb it with a hand jam technique, but I thought he could be strong enough to do the whole ball problem without hand jam at all. Yet, after four minutes of time, it was obvious from the reaction of the audience that not even he was able to complete the ball problem. And I knew that if I was able to top the ball problem, I would take the victory. When I was walking on the mat towards the ball problem, I was already smiling. And I was already hatching the plans of waving to the crowd once I reached the hand jam. I knew it would feel a bummer. So Adam lining it up straight into the hand jam. You said it earlier, Mike, he is something of an expert <laughs> hand jammer. There's the other one. He knows how to hand jam. He knows how to win. He briefly touched the zone, but he wants more than that. He wants the top. Adam Andra lining it up, finishes in style. Just needs to match that top hole. There it is. He is the best climber in the world and he is the winner. I mean, the crowd went crazy. It was an amazing experience. I was definitely very happy, but at the same time I always felt sorry for my rivals as it was not a difficult ball problem. They were just completely new to the style of this ball problem. They just didn't know how to hand jam. The Bouldering World Cup in Munich was one of the examples when everything went so perfect. I was the only one who topped all three ball problems and I was about to go into the last one. During the observation time, it was obvious that the original idea of Rootsetters was to make a double dyno, right and left. Two moves at the same time. I thought it would be possible to do it static with a heel hook. I opted for the method that was intended to be, which was the double dyno. I made the first try and I felt like, yeah, I could do it. In a few tries, I can get into it and I will get done the ball brown. Yet, the second, third try was kind of still the same. I wasn't really improving in my coordination. I gave it even more try. I got consistently more and more tired and I knew that probably it's time to turn my attention into more static way. On my last try, I opted to go feet first because I thought I was just too tired to hold the left hand lock off and put the heel hook. Well, the method with the feet first kind of almost worked, but not really. That was a pretty devastating moment, you know, knowing that probably if I opted it for the first static method, I would have maybe even topped the ball problem. And like that, from almost sure victory, I ended up on the second place. That even costed me the whole victory in the overall bouldering World Cup. So that's it for today. I hope it was an interesting insight into the world of competitions. And I'm really looking forward to competing with my rivals and friends on the World Cup, hopefully this autumn.